Good evening, morning, afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the third webinar of ARC Sermon. Um, thank you very much for joining us again today. Uh, as you know, we uh, this round of uh, webinars, it's part of a competition that we launched in April uh, to design a school in Ghana, Teach on the Beach competition. Um, I would like to remind you that uh, the air, uh, early bird registration has already finished, but now we are in the regular registration uh, period. Uh, you have uh, still uh, till June 1st to um, join in this period, and you can register anytime till July the 12th when the deadline um, it's the deadline of the competition. Uh, okay, so today we have um, we are very pleased and honored to have two of our jury members of this competition, Anna and Jab, who are the founders of Archifair, which is a non-profit organization um, that carries out ecological and social construction. They are very aligned with Arc Storming. Hello, Stephen from Ghana. Um, they are very aligned with us because basically what they, they believe in um, fighting against the uh, pollution and the emissions of CO2 that the traditional industry, construction industry has. And they experiment and use uh, sustainable materials and other techniques. So uh, today they will, they will be sharing with us part of their work with Archifair, actually two interesting projects that they have already built in Ghana um, using earth. So they will explain us how was this experience, how they, they, the challenges they faced in Ghana. And actually they will share with us some tips because uh, they participated in a design competition uh, with this project. So I'm sure it's going to be an inspiration and very, they will share very useful information for all of you. Okay, so let me welcome Anna and Jack. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hello. I'm thank fine, you. thank you. Sorry, thank you very much for joining us. We are very excited to hear uh, from you all, all the, the work that uh, you have done. Um, okay, as other, the other days, uh, first, Anna and Jab will be sharing a presentation, and afterwards we will have a Q&A uh, session where you can ask any question you like, and I will read them out loud. So let's start, Anna and Jab, with your presentation. Yes, um, so I will start the presentation. Uh, thank you, Irene, for, for introducing um, yeah, um, it's me, Anna Schweiger, and my colleague, uh, Jaap Willemsen. Uh, we are the founders of Archifair, and we are going to tell you a little bit of our, about our work today. So, let's see. Okay, first thing doesn't work. So, yes, yeah. now it works. <laughs> uh, so, um, what is Archifair? Uh, we are a non-profit organization that carries out social and ecological construction projects. Uh, with our projects, we want to uh, raise awareness about the negative impact um, of the construction industry on the environment. And um, we are always uh, searching for alternative sustainable building methods. Uh, we experiment a lot with earth, especially with ramped earth. Um, so uh, our main values are the sustainable buildings, uh, the intercultural exchange and the education. So uh, with our projects, we always uh, cooperate with universities, with international experts, and we do on-site construction workshops uh, where we train uh, students, volunteers, um, uh, local population like, like skilled or unskilled workers um, and what's always very important for us is uh, to also learn from the local community to have a look at the village and see um, how did they build um, with earth um, uh, what, what did they use instead of cement to, 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 to make it more stable and we always try to learn from each other and it's very important for us um, 
uh, that we want to uh, create equal uh, exchange at eye level. Yeah, and, and I see a question here to the right side that somebody yeah. asked, where do you guys come from? <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. Yeah, we are... <laughs> Sorry, don't worry, Jab. At the at the end of the presentation, we will ask. Uh, ah, the all questions. these questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, we are going to tell you about our main projects today. That's the Mat Cafeteria, which start, started in 2016. It was also an architecture competition for young architects and students. So it's maybe quite similar to what um, you guys uh, maybe want to do. Um, we built it in 2017. Um, and uh, yeah, then we, we did the Mat Library uh, also in, in Ghana. Uh, we started with the uh, with uh, preparing the project in end of 2018-19. Uh, we want to build it um, in in 2020, but then uh, this little thing called uh, COVID came up and and stopped us, and we had to reschedule it every time. Um, and yeah, finally last summer we had the chance to to really build the Matt Library. Uh, so, uh, where are we from? We are from Austria. <laughs> uh, we are a Viennese-based um, NPO. Uh, I live in Vienna. Um, I have my own construction, uh, my own uh, architecture office here in Vienna. Um, Jaap moved to Berlin, which makes me sad every day, but maybe he comes back soon. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we went to Ghana and built um, the Mat Cafeteria 2017 in the north in Sang and last summer the Mat Library in Nsutem. So you see Accra is here, the, 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 the capital city, and I think you are interested in the taking part in the competition, which is going to be in Busua. So, um, yeah, we will start with the Mat Cafeteria. It was our first project. Um, and it was about 200 square meters tall. Um, our, our partner was the NKA Foundation, which um, was very, very difficult. I think Jaap is going to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, it, um, and we built the, the, the um, cafeteria in about 12 weeks with less than 20,000 euros. So it was, it was really, really a tough project. Uh, yeah, you, to give you an understanding of um, what we did, we thought maybe it's 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 good to to start uh, with the video. So I think Xavier is going to put it in, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
have to assume yeah. control again, I guess. Huh? Ah, yes, you already have. Um, yeah, before, I think this gave quite a good impression uh, of what we have done for the mud library, uh, for the mud cafeteria, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and um, before we dive into like construction details and the way we built this uh, cafeteria, uh, we also want to show a little bit what steps are involved before you can actually start doing something because um, like the construction time is about three months. I think we took about three months uh, more or less, but the preparation started a lot earlier already in um, the summer or the end of the summer of 2016. We started preparing for this project and uh, in the end we finished like uh, one year later or even even a bit later actually uh, like with finishing some documentation and preparing a booklet about the project so it's important to understand that it. it's quite a lot of things involved in managing and setting up such a project and it's not just being in Ghana for a few weeks and building it but it's a lot of other work that we uh, like we also didn't know that in the beginning but we found out that it's quite a yeah it's quite an effort to uh, realize such a project um, Next slide, please, Anna. Yes, and there's another aspect for uh, or regarding building something uh, with an NGO in a developing country. It's not always the case. Um, uh, we've heard that this, the winner of this competition will probably get uh, funding uh, uh, from, from the NGO. But in our case, we had to um, set up our own financing. And yeah, we also work just would like to share that 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 is also quite an, uh, a difficult task setting up the money to realize such a project. Um, often the NGOs are not very uh, uh, well funded, and they also struggle to get enough money, so they don't have money for such a building project. Um, so yeah, that's always an important uh, step for setting up such a project that you also have a plan how to you know secure your funding uh, because without funding and um, it's going to be very difficult. Um, and here you can see that, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we, can see that, uh, we had like a lot of companies that sponsored us. We had family and friends who financed our work, but also um, we, we had the volunteers that helped us on the construction side also had to pay a little contribution, contribution and that together like uh, 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 compiled our financing. Yes, well, some lovely images of our all our volunteers. I think in total it were 35 or something like that for the Mud Cafeteria. In the Mud Library we had even more, but in the Mud Cafeteria it were about 35 people. And they, like we had all the time, like for 12 weeks we were on site. We had most of the time average, on average, like 8 to 10 people with us, more or less. Um, yeah. And here you see um, some sketches. That was the concept we did for the competition where we had like some ideas about how to use the natural components to um, um, cool down the building. We were thinking about how to use the wind or how to use uh, cover the building for uh, the sun. We built in the north of Ghana in this case, which is very hot. So we really you know, considered a concept that would somehow take this into account um, and in the end I mean you see here this stepwise thing which we didn't build because the landscape was not like that but we built something similar you will see in the end or you already have seen but yeah um, next please yeah you see here the floor plans um, with a small section and the facade um, yeah it's it's already important to tell we kept it very simple you are only have very little, a little time to build something like that. Or in our case, we had only 12 weeks, which is not a lot. Um, it's, in the end, I sometimes think it was almost a miracle actually that we <laughs> that we managed to really do it in 12 weeks. But um, yeah, that's why when you do something like this and you have to also take into account, usually you work with volunteers, you don't have a professional construction company uh, uh, assisting you. So you have to keep things very simple. That's a, I think that's one of the most important lessons that we want to give everybody that is watching this and is uh, participating in the competition. You know, you can come up with something very 
spectacular, <laughs> which is you know uh, nice to nice to look at. But uh, if you actually have to build it, you always have to make a lot of compromises because it's uh, yeah it's very complicated when you have to do everything by yourself in a short time with not a lot of money. You have to make a lot of compromises. Um, next, please. Yeah, here you see this was the city, uh, or the small village Sun, where we built. Um, did we show it on the map? I don't know. We didn't really have, but it's in the north of Ghana, and it's a small town, approximately six, seven thousand people living there. And you see that our site was a little bit like um, out uh, away from the city center, so it was always we were sleeping on the other side of the village, and it took us like. 15 minutes to get there, I guess, every morning. We had like a motorbike to help us. If we had to walk, it would, would, would have taken us a half an hour. But yeah, the site was quite on the perimeters of the perimeters of the village, which was um, it was a beautiful site, as you see here. It was very nice. <laughs> we also had a very beautiful view over the valley, but yeah, it was a little bit remote, which was sort of unpractical because we didn't have proper water access and electricity was missing. So we had a lot of challenges with we didn't prepare for it at the beginning because um, yeah, we, we we had expected like some more things would be available, so we don't have to plan for these things, but in the end we had to. Mm -hmm. um, so now a bit more into the construction uh, um, uh, itself. Uh, for the foundation, for example, we also already tried to uh, see can we save uh, uh, or can we save on cement? Um, not so much because it's so expensive it is i mean it is relatively expensive but just for uh, environmental reasons we wanted to avoid using too much cement so we considered using a foundation mostly made up of stones and um, we didn't like order or we didn't like make this typical concrete mixture but we made this poured earth mixture which is a little bit like um, has a little bit less cement in it and we considered that sufficient for a one-story building. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I think I, I can't really say exactly how much cement we saved, but I think quite quite some uh, with this solution. And yeah. And of course, that is also when you do that for the first time in your life and you have to do it by yourself, it's not so easy. Uh, <laughs> the level devices for example, often do not work uh, when you buy them uh, um, uh, in Ghana. I mean, were, we, we bought them from small local stores and um, yeah, there was not always high quality. So we were <laughs> suffering some, some some difficulties with the with the instruments we had to use. And it's just, you know, you don't have a concrete mix. We didn't have a concrete mix, 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 mixer. <laughs> yeah, or we couldn't order like a concrete transport like to do that all in one go so we had to do it ourselves and uh, uh, do it on the floor so that you know you have to do it in sections and then it's challenging to to end up with a nice straight foundation um, and from there on to to continue the rest of the building um, yeah we did all the all the mixing we did in the in the wheelbarrows or, or on the floor so it was it was really really tough work <laughs> doing yes. this because we didn't have any um, electricity most of the time and um, we, 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 we didn't really have access to water. So we built everything with rainwater as well. Um, yes. Yeah, so this is something which is, which is really quite challenging. A lot of challenges, yeah. Okay, so now the plinth, as it is called, or the pedestal, yeah, we didn't plan for this at the get going. We we just discovered this uh, when we got there that we like started to to uh, look for the material to build the pedestal. Uh, this was something we didn't like had already exactly planned before we got there. And then we found out this material, these interlocking blocks. That was somebody um, I don't know where. I think he came from Tamale, like um, yeah, which is like a what, two hour drive and. Uh, he had these interlocking bricks uh, on offer, so we went to look there, and we had this. Uh, yeah, we negotiated, and we actually thought it would be a nice solution for the pedestal. They also use like five percent cement is mixed mixed into these things, uh, which is still like a lot less than the regular concrete, because. Um, we will show afterwards that we will show the rammed earth walls which we have built and um, to do that you always have to create a pedestal which is like waterproof which keeps the water out even standing water but also like moisture that would 
uh, move up the wall. So that's why you need a pedestal. And um, yeah, we choose these these bricks, which turned out to be actually quite nice because they're quite easy to 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 handle, especially for students who have never you know built a wall or used really like did masonry masonry work. I didn't do that myself as well. So as well. It was very practical <laughs> uh, and it was very easy to build like this, like Lego. And um, yeah, that was a good decision after in in in, in the end. Yeah, and then let's 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 call it the most interesting part, I guess, the rammed earth walls, which were also for us a totally new experience. Um, we did, of course, do a lot of reading and research. You know, how do you how do you do this? How do you how do you do this? How does how does this technique works? And how do the formwork works? And um, yeah, we 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 think it's a fantastic method. It's also a very challenging method. But um, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's something that we also still want to you know, further explore because uh, we think it has a lot of potential. Um, but yeah, of course, doing it for the first time, you um, have to learn quickly. And of course, you make also quite a lot of mistakes. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe the next one, Anna. Yeah, first of all, of course, you need to um, make sure you have the right mixture which is also not so easy. Um, that involves quite some experimenting that we did to come up with the right mixture for rammed earth. It cannot be too wet, it cannot have too much big stones, not too much sand, not too much uh, clay. So there are some like, which is definitely one of the toughest parts, you know, to come up with the right balance for these, um, for these uh, aggregates. That you have to use to come up with a good mixture for ramped earth uh, or for other earth like also for earth bricks or other things you, you, you need to balance that which is not so easy if you don't know how to do that and you don't have a like a laboratory uh, on site where you can whatever uh, um, um, do some sampling and find out exactly how much sand or how much silt is in a mixture uh, of earth which is uh, yeah you have to use you have to improvise and you have to use some uh, simple methods um and um yeah then we have like we made some some small samples we made a small box and we did some ramming uh and um i think we used like six to seven we had like six to seven different mixtures um that we tried with like some with cement some without cement and we'd let them dry for a couple of days and then see, you know, how they hold up. And then that was the time that uh, our um, uh, our new friend from Accra that we just met when we went to Ghana the first time. Um, uh, last week, uh, Joelle did a presentation. Uh, she's she's uh, uh, she and Kwame are running uh, the the company Hive Earth, and um, we met them at the beginning when we went to Ghana, and they uh, they. Um, were so nice to come by and help us uh, also in the beginning with finding the right mixture. So Kwame came by and he said to us, okay, so now we're going to test these, these these samples you guys made. And we were like, oh, and well, how are you going to do that? We were, we were <laughs> curious and pretty simple. He just threw them on the floor. And uh, and then it was just like seeing, okay, how do, they, how do they hold up? Are they cracking? Are they breaking instantly? Or are they hard to break? And um, yeah, so we... We actually saw okay, that's actually pretty easy, and then we could just you know see which ones, which of the mixtures were holding up uh, the best, and uh, we finally decided to use for our. Um, the building is made up of like pillars, which are also made up of rammed earth, which are like um, um, how to say that in a perpendicular like in a different angle as the walls look, we have like larger sections and smaller sections, which are turned around. And also our um, uh, roof trusses are, um, are mounted upon these pillars. And for those pillars, yeah, maybe you can go back on that for a second to point it out. Yeah, you can see the the vertical elements, the short ones that we call those, the, 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 concrete, uh, the, the ramped earth columns more or less and um the the sections in between are are the rammed earth walls um, that's what that's like how we started to call those things and uh, the difference between the two is important because we decided to to ram walls without cement and we used for the columns we used a little bit of cement because we also uh in, like later on you will see that the roof trusses the steel roof trusses are lying on those 
pillars of the ramp were pillars which are stabilized because we didn't want to take any chances and we didn't want to have any uh, complications with those um, uh, with those pillars and we were just you know so unexperienced we didn't know how ramp dirt would hold up so we wanted to be uh, go for the safe mixture which is with cement and then you get a stabilized mixture which instantly like after a few days it's already very hard so that gave us enough security but you will we we already like found out later that also the other mixtures you know after a certain time they become also very very hard and if you shelter them from the rain that would be more than sufficient as a load bearing wall but yeah when you do it for the first time you just you know you don't want to take unnecessary risks um yeah and then we talked about the mixture, which is complicated, so you have to find the right mixture. Uh, another thing which is complicated when you use rammed earth is the foam work. And um, it's 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 like when you are ramming inside that box, when you see on the picture there's somebody standing in this box, there's a lot of sheer forces um, are like um, uh, um, put on those, like on the on those uh, foam works. Um, so at the beginning, at our first attempts, we had like um, parts part of the box break out. Like we we had like um, they 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 were connected together, and we thought we had it fixed up very well. And then somehow, some corners or some areas were not fixed sufficiently. So uh, the box was breaking out, and then of course the wall made like this funny curve at that area. So um, we realized, okay, this is very tough to really secure the formwork. And then also, you know, that you can ram freely and you don't have any funny bends in the wall. And um, yeah, we used two different ones. We had one developed in steel. And then later on, Kwame introduced us to this wooden uh, variation, which is a little bit, um, they both had their pros and cons, I would say. We developed the steel one so that it was like a modular construction that we could like use for like all the columns, which I mean, and at some point when we had when we when we had it on the control, it worked pretty OK. Before that, before like the first few attempts, it was not working so well. And then the, the wooden one is a little bit easier. It's a little bit flexible, more flexible. Um, so I guess, yeah, maybe it was the better choice. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, as I said, both had their pros and cons, but yeah, we tested two ver variations, and um, I think there's still a lot, a lot of room for improvement there. Maybe, maybe the good thing with the wooden um, formwork was that it was more flexible. Um, but after some times, uh, the wood gets gets damaged, and the the steel formwork you can reuse it um, and reuse it all the time, also for yeah. other projects. Yeah, that's true. And we 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 didn't throw the threw this wood out. Of course, we used it in the end for some furniture. But yeah, the steel. If you really can come up with a very good like steel formwork structure, which you can keep on reusing, that's is probably the better better way to go. But yeah, you you really have to take in a lot of things that you make it flexible enough uh, so that you can easily put it together. You can e easily take it out or take it apart. And if you have to make some small adjustments, not every, you know, you try to, we try to build very modular, like with similar wall section, but often design, you know, you also make, need to make, uh, you need to make some small adaptions and then, you know, you need to have some kind of flexibility in your formwork to be able to deal with that. So that's very challenging with formwork for, for ram dirt. Um, on this picture, you see on the left side, you see our rammers, which we built on sides. Uh, our welder from the village built those um, and um, to the right you see mixture which is uh, as Anna already told is very hard work and it's really um, serious serious work yeah and then when you have the form work is up and the mixture is ready and it has the right moisture content uh, then you start filling the form works uh, as you see here um, so that's like you add uh, a number of, of these head bins, uh, like you count them. So you fill the, fill the formwork with like 30 centimeter, I think, approximately of, oh, no, Anna is shaking her head. <laughs> it's too much. 12, 12, ah, yeah, 12, sorry, 12 centimeters. And we compress it from 12 down. I thought we compressed it to 12 centimeters. No, it should, it um, should be less than, than, than five centimeters compressed and it shouldn't be more than, than, than 12. So um, if you put in 
12 to 15 um, centimeters. Centimeters and we compress it down to five, centi five six centimeters, yeah. So, and yeah, then, to seven, six to okay. seven is, is, is good. Six to seven centimeters. And then you, 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 you can test that uh, either by the, the rammer itself. It, it gave a, like a nice hollow ring when, when you realized, okay, we're really, you know, it's, it's absolutely compressed to the max. You could not really compress it any further, or you put like a stick and nail in there and then you see, okay, how far does the nail go in? And then you could see like, okay, it's compressed properly and we can put in the next load. And then it's like over and over again. Which in the end, of course, gives you that gives you the typical horizontal layered structure that you see if you know how rammed earth walls look like. But we'll see it later on, I guess, here in the next one of the next slides. Yeah, briefly the roof, which is uh, which is not so spectacular. It's just yeah, we just tried to come up with something like an efficient solution. We used reach, uh, uh, steel trusses, which also are the welder. Uh, in the village did for us and we decided okay we want to like make one kind of roof trusses that we can use like for the whole building and um so the welder had to reproduce like uh, one standard version which that worked actually pretty well uh to a certain extent he didn't like uh, no i'm not going to go into that there <laughs> there were some difficulties with that but uh, the principle worked pretty well and then of course we had like a simple roof cover with uh, uh, metal sheets uh, um, and uh, which is like not the most environmental solution same as for the for the for the roof trusses but uh, we kept them pretty slim i would say and yeah for the roof there are just not that many really super ecological alternatives yet because you will have to find something that really is water resistant and, and yeah earth is not not an option and you cannot also just use wood it's also difficult so for the roof we always have yeah we had to just uh, we went for the simple solution and also the the, the economic solution of uh, metal sheets um then for the floor we also use this 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 like we, we we made a top finish of poor third actually we wanted to ram the entire floor of the cafeteria it's like pr probably like 200 square meters of ramming and we compressed the first layers but in the end we just had so little time that we decided to finish um, uh, finish it with the top layer of a poor earth mixture which we use for the foundation and we just decided okay we need to we need to hurry up so we're gonna like use the last five like I think it was like five five centimeters. Yes, uh, we just decided to make this poured earth mixture, and we had like this mason help us, and uh, then we could of course quickly like in, in I think in two days he did it. Uh, and if we would have rammed it by ourselves, probably would have taken like a week at least to do that. So yeah, that was like just a compromise we made, and of course we had to use a little bit of a little bit of cement, but yeah, that was um, not 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 too much. Okay. Interior, yes. Some, some, no, no interior. <laughs> Slides are out. Pictures. Just some pictures. You see here the outside where we had like, we had like this large extending roof. So you could sit also outside. And we made some benches from the wood we had left. Um, and we made these sun sheets outside. Ah, yeah. We made a kitchen inside with also, also all with leftover materials. Um, and, um, and maybe that. maybe a learning about the kitchen um when when we went there with our design we thought yes of course the kitchen has to be inside um the room uh, no 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 other way to do a kitchen and um then we we came to ghana um the first time and then uh, we had to to learn that uh, nobody in sang uh, is cooking inside so everybody is, is 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 cooking outside so uh this uh, this was more more a, sto a storage then and we also built um a cooking place uh behind the building yeah and you see also here yeah, that we collected the rainwater from the roofs it was also a little bit the reason why we made the roofs like the, the way they are like just in one direction so it was a little bit easier to collect the water we didn't have to build a lot of these tanks um but you can ah yeah sorry yeah here's maybe interesting because you see here at the back that we have uh, plastered some of the surface because we got after the building was finished and this is the back side of the building and we had already during construction there were at some times we had like really we were facing torrential rains like really really extreme um which also surprised us surprised us a little bit our 
building was positioned on a very nice spot because we had this wonderful view over the valley and but it also sort of made our position a little bit vulnerable for rain so we had these huge rains coming in and always the wind was like also extreme so it started to flush away like little small particles from our rammed earth walls which we didn't where we didn't add cement so we got a little bit scared so we thought like oh god it's already you know it's starting to deteriorate so we decided to plaster it um later on and with 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 the more we learned about rammed earth um that is absolutely we found out that that's absolutely no problem when at the beginning like the first small particles wash out of those walls um that is only like happening in the first like first couple of times when it get, gets in touch with rain but when the time goes on this will get less and less and it's it, it, it's not going to be a problem because the walls are so thick so over time you will lose maybe uh, uh, one to two centimeters which is sort of unproblematic so it's something that you shouldn't worry about but we did because we didn't know <laughs> we only found out later that that you know that that's that's the way ram works yeah here's some pictures you saw also, also in the video and maybe now it's 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 good time to um to uh, tell you that um the building like you see it here it, uh, doesn't exist anymore <laughs> uh, because we made this uh, flying roof here and they had a really really tough um storm up there in the north i think it was already during covid i think it was 2020 something um and and the the roof of the middle part flew away and um it also damaged a part of of of, of, of this building um of this roof and damaged the wall a little bit um and we really tried hard to to get it repaired we weren't able to go down there um and uh there was the big problem that the nka foundation um wasn't wasn't there anymore or only one person which we didn't didn't trust anymore um so this was was um it was um impossible for us uh, to get it repaired um and this was like the really really big learning of this project that it's very important um to have um really good uh, local partners uh, who take care of the building who do the maintenance and and who run the project at the end Yes, even if you're not there anymore yourself, when you mm -hmm. finish the construction, it's important that if something happens, which is not unlikely, of course, um, that something breaks, breaks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or yeah, something of the some some things of the building gets damaged uh, when it's used, then somebody has to take care of that. You need mm -hmm. you know, because if, if if as soon as nobody start start to take care of this, then it can quickly deteriorate and some point you know the damage is irreparable so i think it's always important that you find partners that really also are willing to take care of it and mm -hmm. um, you know and you don't a little bit of money to yeah to do that as well and who don't only see a business in 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 doing uh doing this project um, while you are there because you 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 bring jobs to the village uh you buy materials you bring money um you do something for the village and and after you leave um uh, nothing really happens which uh, was a big big problem with NKA foundation yes yeah. so anna i see you already at the clock 40 minutes yeah time for yes. your, for for Mont library <laughs> five more minutes I, I yeah five more minutes <laughs> So uh, yeah, we 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 did uh, learn um, a lot of stuff um, during our first project. Uh, we decided to do another one. Um, uh, as I already told you, uh, we did we did the mud cafeteria in 2017. In 2018, we did all the um, documentation. We wrote a book about it. We did a lot of presentations of our of our mud cafeteria. Um, and then by the end of 2018, beginning 19, uh, we started with the. Um, with the work on on the mud library um and yeah then covid and 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 it stopped us and we started 2022 uh, so you here you can see our first design um okay you don't see when i do something with the mouse here huh no no we don't see anything okay. so uh you see this l-shaped um columns here as well 
uh, we also used uh, went earth um, and in our first um, design we wanted to do this l-shaped um, columns but uh, we switched it later on because uh, with the went with um, the went earth formwork it's always very difficult to do the edges so we thought maybe we we have to to, to get to get uh, something simpler but we had this huge area, we built uh, the library, um, we had one big room where all the shelves um, should go, uh, we have an, 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 a large roofed um, outside area where you can sit and we also had a computer room, this kind of stayed the same. So I will leave out the funding, the funding was, was catastrophic um, because of COVID and the Russian war. So. Um, yeah, this was really, really hard to get all the fundings, um, though we had um, two years time. <laughs> so um, our partners um, for the Mud Library were again the Technical University. Uh, we took volunteers with us. Um, we had Hive Earth who helped us already for the first time. And one of the most important um, um, partners uh, was Loaded. You see here in the middle of the picture, uh, Sylvia Arfer. Um, who is uh, the founder of Loaded, which means Library of Africa and the African Diaspora. Um, they are a non-profit organization uh, in, uh, based in Accra. They run a big library there. Um, they, they help uh, young um, writers uh, um, and do a lot of, of workshops with them, um, have big invite um, writers from 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 overseas and they also do a lot of social um, projects um, in the rural area of Ghana where they where they um, run little libraries and uh, so Sylvia started the project and Sylvia and and Joel uh, who talked to you uh, last week I think um, did a lot of, of the of the preparing at the at the beginning and also Seth, the partner of, of Sylvia, they were a big, big help and and um yeah, here you can, here you can see uh, we had a lecture at the university for one semester uh, where we told the, the students everything about um, building with earth and do all the theoretical stuff together um, with Andrea Riga Jandl, who is um, also um, um, an expert in building with earth here in Vienna. Um, and uh, here you can see the on-site workshop with Kvameter here uh, on, the, on the left um, photo uh, down. Um, and on the, on the right, on the, on, the, on the top, you also see um, uh, Lorenz, who works for Martin Rauch, uh, who is um, a, a pioneer uh, with uh, doing ramped earth walls. I think he's one of the most most famous um, um, earth builder. Uh, so I think it was very, very interesting for our students and also for the local community because Kwame also did a, a workshop in Twi, which is the, the local language there. Um, and yeah, we had uh, 48 volunteers with us. We had four groups um, with uh, 12 uh, students and volunteers each from, from different countries, but uh, most of them studied um, at the university in Vienna. Um, so this is our team. Um, it's Jaap and me on the on the left, but we were um, in in Ghana only for about uh, five weeks, um, helping with the earth walls. And um, from left to the right, we have uh, Lou, Bea, Hanna, and in the front Manu, uh, who were our project leaders. Um, and uh, it was very, very important to have them because um, Hannah did um, did um, all the work in the beginning. She went to Ghana already, I think it was 2020, um, to prepare everything. Um, and they have been on the site during, during the whole construction process, especially Lou and Manu, um, who stayed there until the very end and uh, did all the beautiful uh, shelves and finishing. And yeah, it's very important to have a good team, especially during the construction process, um, to have a lot of helping hands. And this was, um, was very, very important. Um, yeah, here you can see this the site. Um, it was it was on the on the school campus. 
Um, here you have a plan in red. You see uh, where the library is. It is surrounded by the by the by the school buildings, by the classrooms. Um, here you see the construction plan. Uh, you can see in green uh, the the columns, uh, which changed. Uh, we first had the L-shaped columns um, in ramped earth, but then we compared it with with our first project. As Yab said, we put five percent cement in there. Um, but here we made the decision to have like um, really a, a smaller size to have it like I think it was twenty to twenty. Um, and and make it out of of, of concrete um, with twenty percent cement. So uh, if you um, if you take the the whole volume, uh, we saved half half of the cement in total for only for only the columns. So we thought, okay, maybe it's 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 good uh, to keep the earth out here, have have smaller smaller dimensions, and need less cement and and. It's better for the environment and also for the budget <laughs> and yeah yeah this is, uh, yeah, this is often a, a misconception that uh, often it is said um that and many architects do that that they say we build with rammed earth and then they also mention somewhere uh, that they use uh, stabilized rammed earth walls which have cement and you just have to imagine that these walls are most of the time are like 40 by 40 or 45 by 45 centimeters so they are uh, they have a significant volume so if you calculate and if you say well we only use five percent of cement but if you calculate the uh, amount per like per element or let's say let's say a column then in the end you end up with actually quite a lot of cement and it's uh, uh, the advantage uh, compared to like a regular reinforced concrete column is almost negligible and then we decided okay then it's you know, for security reason, for safety reason, and also for like practical building uh, uh, purposes, it's easier to just make concrete columns and separate them. Mm -hmm. And then we can like use the other like ramped earth walls and we can really do them without cement because that's actually the only thing that really makes sense for the environment. Mm -hmm. So you can really re reuse these walls. Mm -hmm. And if you have cement added into them, then it's not so like you can continue to ram them all the time because the cement is polluting those ram dirt walls. Mm. Yes. Um, so because we are short of time already, um, we want to invite you um, to visit our Insta channel. There we have a lot of uh, different reels where you can see the, the construction process, um, how we did the foundation, how we did all the mixing. Um, the plinth, um, the walls, and you also see uh, videos of the of the finished uh, projects. Uh, so our Instagram channel is Archifair, so <laughs> uh, you, you you can find it there. And yeah, I think we we just close here with with some pictures of the of the finished mat library. You can see uh, we have a lot of, of sitting areas outside. Um, we used also a lot of um, bamboo, which we harvest um, in um, directly in the village. Um, we tried to to use a lot of, of color, which is which is typical for this region, and we wanted to make it bright and friendly for the for the children as well. And we also put bamboo under the um, corrugated um, iron sheets on the roof. So, um, yeah, and Manu and Lou uh, built this um, beautiful shelf. And um, yes, Loaded came by the end and put all the books in there. And yeah, I would say that's it. And um, we could we could start with the question and answer part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jab and Anna. Uh, it was really really um, interesting listening to you. And first of all, I would like to say congratulations because. <laughs> Uh, not only the design, uh, the, out, the outcome of the project is looks super beautiful, but uh, I'm really impressed that not only you designed the the, um, the building, but you uh, 
fundraise it, uh, you, you finance it, right? Um, with the sponsors and with your family, your friends, or you, you, you made it possible um, looking for the money. You also organize the volunteers to help you build it, you build it with your hands. And so basically you, you, you did uh, 360 degrees of the project. So I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed because they, they, they are both uh, very, very beautiful projects. Um, thank, thank you. you. And I'm sure this is an inspiration for all our, our uh, participants today. I would like first uh, to, um, to ask you, uh, because, uh, okay, it's not, I don't think, I think it's a very, very special thing that you have done uh, carrying out this project from the design, uh, all the process, not till you build it. Um, but uh, this is maybe a bit difficult for every architecture student to, to, to do, no? But uh, what about the, the experience building with your own hands? Uh, I think this is all, uh, something that it's more common or more accessible for people to do. And I would like to ask you how important do you think this is as an architect to have the chance to build your own uh, project or other person project, but the, with your own hands? Um, yeah, that is um, um, very important, I guess, because um, it will just, is teaches you a lot about, um, you know, how complicated building is actually. Um, and um, you have a lot of influence, of course, but it's, it's just, you know, we're all used to drawing things on the computer and making some nice 3D images or renderings or Photoshop images. And then, of course, when you then really start to think about you know, you have to really start to think, you are forced to think, okay, but how I'm gonna fix this part to the other part or how I'm actually, I'm gonna do that and how that will look when we're gonna do it like this. And then it comes down to every, like to the smallest detail that you have to think through before you can actually do something, you know, before you can buy a material and then you really have to think it all the way through. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say like, well, we just, you know, we just probably going to be like this, but the construction company will do that for us. They will do it like they have done it like a thousand times. And of course, there are standard solutions for a lot of things, but we somehow had to rethink everything from the beginning. And that is very challenging, but I think it's also very healthy to 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 experience that. That is, mm. you know, you have to really think everything through and you cannot just think like somebody else will do it for you. You know, it's like... Um. What I think was also a very important experience for us is uh, we, we, we did everything by hand. We, we didn't have any machines. We had to carry everything. We had to mix everything by hand on the floor, in the wheelbarrow. Uh, we had to... Uh, to 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 go and get the water and 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 all that stuff and then you experience how much energy uh, really goes into making concrete um, and and mixing earth and uh, then you 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 know what it is worth and 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 you 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 you, you won't um, um, uh, won't take it down the building um, because you you know it was so much so much hard work uh, to build it with your own hands. So uh, yeah, and also because we we really try to use as as less cement as possible, and also in concerning other materials, you think like okay, we want to use as much wood as possible. We want to use as much ramp earth or earth as possible, and then you start you know you build like the foundation, and then you feel like. Oh, we have to buy so many of these 50 kilogram cement bags and like it keeps on going and going and you, then you realize how much of that stuff is used around the mm -hmm. planet because we already felt like we are using a lot even if we, we are trying so hard to minimize it but you know you think like, yeah but okay for the foundation i mean you need to use some cement you know they're like sometimes you know you know there are certain construction parts you cannot do them without cement or it's very difficult Mm -hmm. And then you realize how much of that stuff goes into it, you know, and then you think back at home, you think like, it's like used so much and nobody thinks about it. It's just like, and it's so cheap. So you just mm -hmm. keep on using it. And then you realize when you're doing it yourself, you start to get respect for like, no, we, 
we, we, we want to get rid of this material because it's just not good for the environment and we know all the complications attached to it. And that's the same thing with sand. Um, we also discovered like with construction sand that we um, we did some like a presentation like two years ago, I guess, Anna, for the, for the technical university where we also like digged in, into a bit more into sort of the environmental consequences of certain materials. And we did also some investigating to like concrete. And of course, we explained like the students, uh, the process of uh, producing cement is very environmental and friendly and not so much the heating of the ovens uh, to produce cement, but also the chemical process that takes place, which um, uh, sets sets free a lot of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. But what it, we also discovered, sorry? It's, it, it's um, the, the cement industry... Um, um, it's responsible for 8% of the world's uh, carbon dioxide emissions, so which is huge. The building industry, about 40%, but cement or just the, 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 the construction material cement is uh, responsible for 8%. And as I said, it's most of it by it's, it's, it's due to the chemical reaction, which is not very easy to... Um, stop. Yeah, stop or exchange, you know, because they're talking about, yeah, we're going to make concrete with um, hydro hydro uh, power and stuff like that, or with, with just electricity or something like this mm -hmm. to fire the ovens, which would, of course, make it less um, uh, uh, environmental damaging, but the chemical process is, you know, you cannot stop that. It will take place. You have to really design something else. But I wanted to say that what we discovered that, you know, to make concrete you also use sand and which uh, we read several articles about where the sand is coming from and it used to come from from rivers in many countries when there was plenty of it but it's also of course that uh, caused severe ecological damage to rivers but nowadays they are getting it from the ocean from the beaches in ghana they 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 that's really like sort of a mafia uh, prex uh, thing what's going on there where they just uh, overnight they destroy harvesting fields like dig away the topsoil get to the sand and put mm -hmm. it on a truck and then sell it again because yeah this is like the sand used for concrete you cannot take it from this from the from the desert that doesn't work because it's not the right kind of sand because you would think there's pl plenty of it there but that doesn't work so you need a, a certain kind of sand and that's also very damaging to the environment we have found out after okay. some research like how serious that is nobody talks about this because it's like you know sand you just order a truck of sand and you get a truck of sand where does it come from so basically i mean as you because one, uh, when you are an architect, normally you, you, you think from the architect point of view, but in doing this kind of project, you you were the architect, the builder, the owner of the project, the researcher. So at the end, the lessons you learn are uh, infinite, no? Yes, so you can this, summarize it like that, definitely. Uh, okay, so uh, completely advisable for our participants to mm -hmm. a volunteer to, to learn about this practical experience. Okay, and uh, I would like to um, also ask you, after all this experience that you said, what are the lessons that you brought back to uh, Vienna or Berlin? Like how this work that you have done influenced the work that you do now in your country? Um, well, I would say uh, for me, it was, it was a huge learning. Um, um Jab and, and 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 I worked for the same company before before we went to Ghana and um after that we got uh, self employed um and I run my own business now and one of the of the most important things I learned down there in Ghana is um that uh we planned everything and, and, and wanted to do it this way or that way and nothing worked out ever. Nothing worked the way we planned it, but it was always, okay, it doesn't work, but uh, maybe there's another way. And so, so we learned um, um, there's one goal and there's not only one way to the goal. Um, you can take many different ways, and it's all there's always a, a, a way to to get there. And um, uh, I learned to, or we both, I guess, uh, learned to, to to stay flexible and 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 creative. And um, yeah, there is a way, and and you just have to go with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure um, it it 
it has to to affect you know about um anyway i would like to to go to the questions from the audience because they have um already asked some um okay the first question stephen morgan is asking us uh did you consider using thatch roof what would be the challenges and advantages if you would use that we didn't i mean no we didn't really consider it um because it's i don't think it was available there to be honest i mm -hmm. mean that would have been very difficult to come up with the, like with sufficient materials to really build such a roof I, um they have like these, these we had like used these these um what do we call again these mats these zyna mats on us something like that yeah, mats. Which these attached like this straw or uh, mats things that we used in the mud cafeteria um like to we, we 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 hung them from the roof i think also to block the side of the corri uh, corrugated metal sheets a bit you know to have like a nicer finish from the inside but I think it would that mean it's a very it's not such an easy method of making a touch roof. So that will definitely consume a lot of time. It will be way more expensive. Um, so yeah, I think of it's, course it's, it's a more ecological solution. Mm -hmm. That's that's for sure. But um, I think you know, it's very very hard for unskilled um, work yeah. to do it for the first time. Um, but of course, if 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 there would have been somebody who's skilled and can do that. Um, great idea <laughs> go for it <laughs> yes okay i guess it also depends on the availability and the skill of the of the workers as you said mm, yes okay. another question from andrea uh, hello there how much the roof is elevated from the walls which criteria were behind this choice um i think we can expect the easy the easiest way to explain that is that we had like a certain um, inclination of the roof, so we had like the same level of the like do we have the same level of the con of the rammed earth walls, and then on top of that we had the concrete slab, and then we made these roof trusses, and of course we need a certain inclination like for the rainwater to wash uh, to wash out um, or to to run down the roof, and uh, I think it was like. 10 degrees, 10%, I'm not sure mm. what it was in the end, but uh, something like that. And um, which sort of automatically results in that in the back of the building, like the, the lower parts, I don't know, the distance between the roof and uh, the top of the concrete slab was maybe... 40 centimeters? Yeah, max, okay. I guess, yeah. It wasn't yeah. that much in the front. It looks like, yeah, it looks a lot, it's like it's a lot higher because of the inclination. Of course, we could have like made us like made it a little bit a little bit less steep. Um, yeah, possible. I mean, you could you probably like make it a little bit less steep, but yeah, we also have to take on when it rains a lot. It's usually advisable to make it a little bit more steep. So that's mainly the reason why you see this like um, you can um, yeah see such a such a difference between the top of the roof and the and the walls, and you can look into it like that. That's the same for the mud library, but there we covered it with the bamboo sticks. So we, we covered it, but we just spent a bit more time on the on the on the library. So we, there also was more time to finish these things. I think we would have done the same for the for the mud cafeteria if we would have had the time. We didn't, so we just yeah. It's also I mean it's a natural ventilation when it's nothing blocked, the air can go through. So it's in principle it's not a it's warm enough there, so it's not there's no real reason to sort of you know try to make everything close close everything because of the uh, because of you know you're afraid to 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 freeze or in the building or something like that that's totally not necessary yeah there is a, a, actually uh, more questions about the roof so i mm. will uh, take the chance to to ask them uh together uh okay this one uh how did uh from josue uh, how how did you fasten the ceiling structure onto the ramp earth? Um, I yeah. think uh, we had the concrete slabs on top, and then we had this um, um, iron uh, plates. Uh, oh yeah, my we God, had this. My English this. is too bad. Um, where we where we where we put the the iron trusses on trusses on it. So yeah, we had this like the 
like metal plates to where you could weld the, the roof trusses on. And those metal plates, they had like these reinforcement rods going down into the columns. So we, in the end, so when we put the concrete on top of the load bearing columns or the reinforced columns, uh, we also use these kind of like little, um, yeah, little base plates with reinforcement rods going into the concrete and anchoring it. And then we welded the roof trusses on top of that. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, this one uh, is asking also about the thermal um, purpose of the material. Well, hi, uh, Patara. Hi, can you explain the roof structures? Many projects use a double system with a flying top layer and a ceiling inside. In this ceiling, uh, is this ceiling crucial for thermal purposes? And which materials are ideal? Um, I'm not sure if we are in a position to answer that question, like based on scientific research. I mean, what I've read about this is that even though it gets very hot under metal sheet roofs, that doesn't necessarily mean that the whole building is going to heat up extremely. The walls are more important. That's what I've read in research that what we have discovered um i would always you know think probably helps if you can somehow create like a second layer like you have the top layer of the roof which becomes quite hot of course when it's hot outside and the metal sheets heat up if you can create some kind of layer in between uh where the air also goes through and that somehow would shelter what's below there could probably have an impact but yeah, it's always a question of there's more money. You need a second, a second, uh, a second roof. I think if you look at the building from Kerry in Burkina Faso, he has this structure where he has this uh, vaulted roofs. I think like brick, brick ceilings, and on top of that, he has this metal structure with the sheets to keep the rain out. So that's sort of a double structure. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, definitely would be helpful to do it like that. But mm -hmm. of course, that's also like. A, it takes more time, it takes more money. Um, and um, but it's if you can come up with a good solution for that, um, mm -hmm. it's definitely advisable, I would say. Yeah, okay. We are having a lot of questions, so I will ask the one or two last ones because if not, <laughs> we are going to take a lot of time. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, bonjour. The finishes of ramp walls in both projects is exquisite, internally and externally. I agree. How <laughs> do you preserve, maintain this finishing from deteriorating? Well, I think, Anna, you can say something about the model library, at least, what we did there. Um, uh, yeah, we, we put, um, oh my god, I don't, I, I the don't coding. know. Yes. We, a coat, like a coat. Joel explained last week about this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a coating. You can can spray spray it on it, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but but um, it 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 stops the earth from 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 erosion. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it just it 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 it, it makes it. A little bit quick you get like a quicker uh, like a certain like hard outer layer so that we of course somebody told us that like if you you know if the building is finished and then all the like little kids come there it's very tempting to scratch at the walls and like like mm -hmm. scratch these little stones out of it so we didn't want to, that to happen um if nobody would touch the wall or if nobody would sort of start doing that then you don't really need it um but uh, yeah, we decided, okay, that is something that is very likely to happen uh, because it's a library for, ch for school children. And um, um, so maybe it's smart that we, you know, uh, if not everybody is all the time paying attention to what the kids are doing outside and everything that we put this little code on there. And uh, yeah, that's what it was. It was a tip from, from Kwame and Joel to do that, yeah. Uh, maybe what what also makes uh, makes the wall, walls very beautiful and what is something we, we learned from from Lorenz um, who works for Martin Rau is that it's very important how you you push uh, the the earth into the form 
uh, because if you if you um, put it in the in the middle, the 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 biggest stones uh, go to the sides, and then you don't have this smooth um, smooth layer. So if you if you um, um, put the the earth um, against the against the formwork, uh, the bigger smalls go inside, and then mm -hmm. it's very important. Uh, that you start ramming um, on the outside, um, so the small the small stones also go to the inside of the formwork, and that makes um, makes your your walls very very smooth. And also the way you 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 put the formwork off. So there are some some little little tricks um, doing the walls uh, which you which you learn uh, time by time. So uh, the the last walls always always get the uh, are the prettiest ones. <laughs> are the prettiest ones, yeah. But it's also yeah. not an indicate not always a good indication when the wall is very smooth because that's not always meaning that it's a very nicely ramped wall because that also can mean you have only like fine little sand on the outside and it looks maybe nice. Or when the mixture is too wet, it can also look smoother when you like take off the formwork and you think like, wow, it's looking very nice. But it's very likely then you're going to have a lot of cracks in your wall because the mixture was too wet or you have the fine sand only on the outside, mm -hmm. which washes away easier then. So it's not always a good indication when it looks super smooth and you don't see any larger stones and you think, wow, it's the, this is the best wall. That's not, a, that's not a good indication. You should see some stones and some yeah. texture. That's actually a good sign. I would like to recommend uh, Bonishwa to uh, check out the webinar with Joel last week in our YouTube channel because she explains a lot of technical details of how to build and how to preserve the Ram Earth uh, mm -hmm. Uh, walls, so uh, there I'm sure the, all the technical details are, are better uh, answered, uh, which actually Joel also uh, helped you in this project. So, mm -hmm. okay. and there are a lot of questions about the materials uh, asking if you tried to use bamboo or palm, cocoa, hemp, fiber. Uh, so, have you used any other sustainable material that you can share with the audience? Uh, we used a lot of bamboo with the, with the mat library. Mm -hmm. um, for for the windows and to 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 close um, the space between the the roof and the walls, uh, we didn't use any bamboo um, for the for the mud cafeteria because there there wasn't any um, in, in the sun. No, but I think also and this you also is... have the problem that that the bamboo has to has to dry um, for 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 some time. Yes, but bamboo is also not like. The... Bamboo is not so easy because it has to be treated if it's going to be durable. So it has to undergo several kinds of pr procedures to make it really durable. And I think that's more common in Asia to do that. But um, I think it's in Ghana and that's not so common. So and that's also it, it does include some kind of like polluting substances to make the uh, material more resistant. But if I think this, 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 if I read that sentence, Instead or I read the question, it's about what did we mix inside the earth, like for our ramming uh, mm -hmm. a mixture. But we didn't, we, 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 no, we did uh, rice husk, mm -hmm. Anna. We did use yeah. rice husk in, as in, the, sun. in sun. We experimented with that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't think it was like a huge success. We, 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 were, not, we were like not really sure, actually. We, we didn't do enough testing on it because. Mm -hmm. The, like the, that's left over from cooking with rice you get these like these this this um, the rice like, production yeah, yeah from the rice production the skin mm -hmm. and they had like mountains of that in the village and and at that time was Kwame was with us and he said like maybe we can try to add this mm -hmm. uh, as a fiber into the mixture mm -hmm. and see if that you know makes it stronger but i think that would require more testing in a laboratory and then like mm -hmm. a concealed environment to really test mm -hmm. that and if really makes a difference. I think we just, yeah, we did it outside. I thought that, that was not really um, uh, giving us really a conclusive answer if that really helps. But okay. yes. But Kwame does a lot of, of experiments with, uh, yeah. with alternatives. Uh, mm -hmm. And and he has really, really some, some nice samples of that. OK, yeah, maybe you need experience, uh, previous experience, no? Or, or suppliers nearby that they know about these uh, other materials, right? So you can use them. OK, uh, any other question? Uh, let me see. Yeah. OK, Greg, could you imagine doing a curved ramp earth wall? 
If so, what kind of formwork would you use? Hmm. Um, I know Kwame does does one in Nigeria, I think. Mm -hmm. that he actually does. So maybe it will <laughs> show you some pictures of that as well. Um, yes, of course, it's 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 possible. Um, I think it it depends on the on the on the angle, like and um, you you will will need uh, like a, a yeah, you... round formwork. You need a round board, yes. like round, round rounded boarding, but you, mm -hmm. you could you you are able to to get those things, I guess. But mm -hmm. let's say if you are somewhere on the countryside in Ghana. I don't think you should be able to, you know, shouldn't shouldn't count on it that you would go to the local store and say like I would like to have these nicely curved uh, uh, um, uh, wooden boards because they only provide you with the like we use the marine right. plywood plywood for our formworks because they are not so sticky, so we don't you don't want to use materials that would stick to the to the to the rammed earth mixture because if you take it apart then you would probably damage the wall taking it apart. So we have this marine plywood. Mm -hmm. And probably you can also bend that if you want to do it yourself, but it's all yeah, but not it's, so easy. Yeah, as you said during the presentation, at the end, when you are working in, in Ghana and building something with your own hands, the best advice and the fundamental lesson that you learn is as simple as possible, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and, and there are, I think there are different different techniques, not rammed earth, but using these copped mm -hmm. earth technique, then you are way more free to make the wall whatever in whatever way you want it to have. But if you're using rammed earth wall, as I said, it's very like the formwork is very tricky. So that would be definitely a huge challenge. Definitely possible, but it's a challenge, I would say. Yes, I think you can do it with, with like a thin um, metal uh, sheet but the the surrounding the formwork has to be like very um in, in, in a small grid to 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 keep it stable so it's of course possible but um it depends yeah. on what you want to do if you if you uh want to to build a, a project in a rural area um and you don't have uh, that much money and you don't have that much time um it's going to be difficult but um if you if you want to make like a flagship store for for for, for something or have enough money left to to do stuff like this it 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 it's of course possible and and it's going to look nice i guess but um yeah it depends on what 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 you what you have to plan yeah. okay yeah sure okay guys uh, well i think uh, we have already uh, um used a lot of extra time it's 7:20 uh in our time zone so i just wanted to thank you again so much for today's uh sharing and uh, you're welcome a lot uh, and i just wanted to know if there is going to be a third mud project after this too well um we are working on it. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so maybe we have the chance to join you and collaborate with you as volunteers. So don't don't hesitate to to share with us uh, your next well. project. We will be glad uh, to share it with all our community, and maybe they can join you. Mm, yes, so nice. always check our Insta channel. Um, we will keep you updated there, and we have a homepage as well, so you will find all the information there. But uh, it's yeah, we're working on it, but it it, it will will still need some time. <laughs> okay, great, amazing. Well, guys, thank you so much again, and see you again in July. I remember you that Jab and Anna are our jury members uh, for the Teach on the Beach competition, so they will be evaluating all your projects. I wish you good luck, and see you in a couple of months, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you too. You. Bye. Bye bye. Bye-bye.